Hey guys, Halfway Dead here. This will be a bit of a different video because I don't have a script. I need to get this video out quick and I can't go through my usual very slow process. I hope that through the magic of editing the video will be watchable anyways. Well, why am I making this video in the first place? If you've watched my ultimate controller comparison, you will know that I found some very weird input lag results on the DualSense and DualShock 4. In that video I said that if I made a mistake measuring then I would take the video down. I didn't actually make a mistake measuring, but the results are still misleading, which is why I'm making this video. The ultimate controller comparison is currently unlisted. The only thing wrong with it is as far as I know the stuff I'm talking about in this video, so there's still a link in the video description available here in case you want to watch it. So how did this mistake end up happening? For that I will give a summary of what I did and how I found the mistake. If you want to skip all that, because it's gonna get quite technical, I will put a timestamp to the summary at the end of the video in the description and you can skip right to the end to just the important parts of what you need to learn from this. Anyways, I think it's very important that I document all the details and make them available for you, so that's what I'm doing here. So just a very quick reminder of what I found in the video. The curious thing about the input lag tests in the video was that I found an input lag of 14 milliseconds on the DualShock 4. 11 milliseconds on the DualSense and 11 milliseconds on the Thrustmaster eSwap controller. Now, the weird part about that is that I had tested the DualShock 4 before and had gotten a result of 10 milliseconds. That is absolutely not within my margin of error. I can easily detect changes of down to 1 milliseconds, so a 4 millisecond change should indicate that there is a real change that has happened. This would be just one thing, but there are even third-party sources that can verify the 10 millisecond DualShock 4 result as well as the 7 millisecond DualSense result I should have gotten, even though I got 4 milliseconds more on both of those. For the Thrustmaster controller I couldn't find any other source, but it turns out that that one's also affected. So before that other video came out, I already got confused and obviously tried my best to figure out what was causing this difference. So the very first thing I did is obviously just swap back and forth between controllers and see uh, if my testing setup somehow broke. I swapped back between the Xbox Elite controller and the DualSense because they are supposed to be roughly the same latency down to 0.2 milliseconds. However, I continually got the same extra 4 milliseconds on the DualSense while the Xbox Elite controller continued to measure in at 7 milliseconds. So I was rather convinced that my testing methodology wasn't failing me. What I also did, and that's the most confusing part, is I did actually test different ports. So I did try the supposedly fastest port on my motherboard, which is a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port. However, that did not make a difference and it also should not make a difference because the USB protocol from USB 2.0 should still be plenty fast for controllers and the throughput is the only thing that really changes and we're caring about latency here. So that should not be affected by USB 2.0 versus 3.0 or something like that. I also went in and used DS4 Windows because the PlayStation controllers obviously are a bit different so maybe Rocket League treats them differently but when I use DS4 Windows it turns the PlayStation controller into an Xbox controller so for Rocket League it's the same as if it's an Xbox controller. However that did not change the input lag result in any way so that didn't seem to be the issue either. Well that's all I did for the previous video and I said that I didn't want to spend a whole nother week testing before putting that out and that is quite frankly just my mistake and I really shouldn't have done that. But even after another week of testing I did not actually find anything. So here's what I did after the video. First of all I wanted to make absolutely certain that my measuring method is not somehow compromised and doesn't work properly. Because usually I use my own Arduino setup and nobody else uses that and usually I get the same results of other accurate sources but this time I didn't. So another popular method is just to use a slow motion camera. When you just point the slow motion camera at the screen and just press a button on the controller and then wait until that action appears on screen you just get the input lag. Now you won't necessarily get everything the same down to the millisecond because it might look a little different and video also has to deal with effects like rolling shutter that I don't want to get into. You might get somehow slightly different results and I actually did get different results when I used the slow motion camera method but I only got different results that are equally different on both controllers. That's the important part. I get roughly two milliseconds less measured on the camera method but that should be just artifacts of the camera method but it's the same 
Steam on both the Xbox Elite controller as well as the DualSense. So I was still getting a four millisecond difference between the two controllers on the camera method. And that obviously should not be the case because both controllers should have seven millisecond input lag. So basically with the camera method, I found the same results that I found with my other testing method. Now, to make absolutely certain that Rocket League wasn't at fault, I went ahead and also tested this in Fortnite. Now, the camera method, the great thing about it is it translates to any game. So after some trial and error of uh, trying to get consistent results in Fortnite, I had a bit of a hiccup, but it doesn't matter. I got consistent results in the end. And the result from Fortnite is pretty much the same. I got like a 3.8 millisecond difference, which is completely within the realms of random variance from the 4.2 milliseconds that I'm expecting. Basically, Rocket League is not at fault. How do I know that my controllers aren't just different from other controllers? Even though that should not happen, maybe it has and somehow I got a controller with a different firmware on it that doesn't work properly. To make sure that that is not the case, I got myself a USB host shield for my Arduino to replicate with this testing method. And with this testing method, I found exactly as you would expect, 7 milliseconds on the dual sense, so that's the low input lag that others also reported. And I found 7 milliseconds on the Thrustmaster controller, which is why I am now aware that it is also affected by this. And I could not retest my DualShock 4 with that method because I kind of broke it with some soldering I did. However, that should not matter because uh, two years ago I measured the DualShock 4 and it had the low input lag, so that controller should not be the issue. Lastly, I tested something that I really should have tested before I uploaded the last video, but it takes a lot of time, so that's why I did not do it. So, what did I do? When you install Windows, you often have like driver issues, you have stuff that doesn't work together like it should do. So, in order to make sure that I'm not just running some kind of weird configuration with my overclocking, polling rate tools and stuff like that, that caused this higher input lag, I made sure that I reinstalled a completely fresh Windows version. On that Windows version, the only thing I installed is Steam, and then with Steam Rocket League, just to run the input lag test. And again, I did that with the camera method because I didn't want to install anything else to make my other method work. Well, even though I said I should have done that for the previous video, because to my knowledge, that was the most likely cause of the difference, it did not actually make a difference. So even on the brand new Windows installation, this difference was still there and the input lag was still higher than it should have been. Therefore, I thought I was done testing and started writing a script for the video this was supposed to be. However, a couple of days ago, someone indirectly gave me an idea about the USB host controllers. Now, when I mention the word USB controller here, I want to be very clear. I'm not talking about a gamepad like this. I'm talking about the controller that controls the USB devices on your computer. So that is usually referred to as a USB controller and I don't know any other term for it. So don't get confused when I say USB controller. I'm not talking about an Xbox gamepad or a PlayStation controller. I'm talking about the part that controls the USB devices. So usually you will have at least two USB controllers in your PC. One which is provided by your processor and one which is provided by your chipset. I also happen to have a PCI extension card for more USB slots which provides its own USB controller. So what I did is I basically just plugged my PlayStation controller into that USB extension card. And would you look at that? All of a sudden on my PC, I was getting seven milliseconds of latency. Now that frustrated me a lot. I know it's good that it has that low input lag, but after all the testing I've gone through to find that just the different USB controller was all of a sudden getting the better input lag, that was rather difficult to accept. Once I found that, I basically started testing every single USB port on my PC. And I should mention just in case that I did this part on the eSwap controller, but it should not matter as I'm going to explain later. Basically, I did find that some ports on my PC did actually have the low input lag, but most of them didn't and it has nothing to do with USB 2.0 or 3.0 or 3.1 or whatever. The difference is the USB host controller. There are USB ports which are provided directly by the CPU and there are USB ports which are provided by the chipset. And the USB ports provided by the chipset give me high input lag. But please don't misunderstand it. This does not mean that the chipset USB ports are always bad. First of all, I literally drove to my friend 
to try it on his PC and all the USB ports are fine no matter what USB host controller they belong to. There's also no reason for the chipset to not be as fast as the extension card I bought so there's really no good explanation for this other than it is a bug. Furthermore, don't forget, this is not about every controller being slower on those ports. It's just the PlayStation controllers that seem to be affected. So in order to figure out what's going on, I did even more testing. I happen to have a really old Logitech dual action controller from, I don't know, 15 years ago. And that also has the same issue. It gets eight more milliseconds in the wrong port because it clocks in at 125 Hertz, which is another thing I need to talk about because the extra four milliseconds are what I'm experiencing because the controllers run at a 250 Hertz polling rate. Because once you overclock them to a thousand Hertz, the extra input lag is only one millisecond. So it's nearly in the realm of irrelevancy. So I have a non-PlayStation controller that is affected. However, it's not an Xbox controller. It doesn't implement the Xinput protocol that the Xbox controllers implement. Then again, it does not mean that the input protocol is at fault because my Arduino that I used for my baseline testing scenario that I've previously tested in a bunch of different ports because I obviously want to make sure that everything is consistent. That is not affected by this issue. Even though it also uses the direct input protocol, which is also what the PlayStation controllers and the Logitech Dual Action use, it is just doing fine. The only possible cause I see for why only some of these controllers are affected by this issue is that the PlayStation controllers usually send a signal back to the PC with every single pole. So even if nothing has changed, the analog stick is in the exact same position, they still just send you again, okay, this analog stick is in this position, and the button X and Y are pressed and the others are not, it sends you every single pole. And the Xbox controller only sends data when there has been a change. So maybe there's some kind of flooding issue that causes this extra input lag because it starts buffering an extra pole and then you have an extra pole delay. Again though, this only happens on the chipset ports of my motherboard, which is why it should definitely be considered a bug. So as a summary, does it matter what port you plug your controller into? The answer is it should not, but apparently there can be bugs that make it so. If you have the same motherboard, for which I by the way did run a BIOS update and I also installed the chipset drivers, then I can tell you that you should not plug your PlayStation based controllers or any controller where you're unsure whether it behaves like an Xbox controller, those should be plugged into the USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports on the board. And the way in which I know the ports are fine, aside from the testing I did, is to look at the specifications page of my motherboard page on the manufacturer's website. I also know that the i5-6600K with the Z170A motherboard by ASUS are not affected by this bug as that's the computer from my friend that I tested. For anything else, I cannot be certain. There's a very realistic chance that other MSI B450 motherboards are affected by this and maybe all Ryzen motherboards are even affected by this issue. That does not mean you can't get the low input lag on Ryzen, you just then need to plug it into the USB that is directly provided by the CPU. And again, you can hopefully figure that out on the manufacturer's page in the specifications. Other than that, I'm not really sure what else I can say. I don't even know who to report this bug to because I don't know if it's MSI's fault, I don't know if it's AMD's fault or Microsoft's fault, but either way, it's a weird issue that really should not happen. I want to take this moment to say that I'm very sorry and I should have checked more thoroughly. I will re-upload the controller comparison with the correct results as soon as I can get around to it and I would very much appreciate your support on it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon for the fixed video.